We are about to give you the winning strategy for all of your drafts on Yahoo. You might call it a cheat code. The most mispriced players, according to the default rankings that your friends will be drafting from and how you can build a juggernaut team to battle against them. Yeah, so when you log into Yahoo, it's sorted by x rank. We are going to be comparing that to all the drafts on Underdog. And the big difference between Underdog and Yahoo is everyone playing on Underdog is playing for money. There's thousands of drafts. Our ADP is updating every single day. The news, the our takes, everything's included into that. Josh and I, we've already done 200 drafts as well. So we know what we're talking about, <laughs> uh, but this is how you kind of beat, beat this. Yeah, you, you leverage it, right? It's once again, thousands, hundreds of thousands of drafts versus a couple expert opinions. And I will weigh on, you know, the wisdom of the crowds in this mm -hmm. regard. So to me, as soon as I dove into Yahoo drafts, what stood out to me is how great the wide receiver values are in rounds two through 12, but how bad the running back values are beyond round one. I think the best approach is going to be a hero running back first round, almost shove it in there in terms of that position. And then after that, we can get both your starting wide receivers, a flex wide receiver, maybe two extra ones onto your bench while also shoehorning in an elite quarterback in there too. Yeah, I feel very comfortable that we will be able to point out some of the best wide receiver values on the board. So your choice, if you're like Austin Eckler, Christian McCaffrey, Nick Chubb, Bijan, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley, Walk away with one of them, and then we'll start hammering the wide receivers. A complete agreement with you on that. Some of the wide receiver values in round two are absolutely extreme. I mean, you have A.J. Brown, you have Amon Ross St. Brown, you have Garrett Wilson. These are all players that are either in round one, on the fringes of round one. And here on X rank, it's 14th overall player for A.J. Brown, 18th overall for Garrett Wilson, 19th for uh, I'm going to say round. So like, hey, we're at the sixth pick. You can either take your choice of Austin Eckler and Nick Chubb. This to me is going to perfectly align with a hero running back strategy, which spoiler alert, towards the end, you might not feel great about your starting two running backs, but we'll give you some options later mm -hmm. on in your drafts. And also for a managed league, your waiver wire is going to be your friend. So if you dominate the flex position in a two running back, two wide receiver, heck, even three plus the flex spot, you're going to potentially get four, five, six starting caliber wide receivers when the rest of your league is going to struggle filling theirs. And it's not just the second round wide receivers for me, like looking at some of the early uh, values, Calvin Ridley's 38th overall. He's now a top 24 pick on underdog Keenan Allen, 51st overall, Jerry Judy, 59th overall. Christian Watson, 63rd overall. Mike Williams, 74th overall. Those are like three or four rounds discounted versus where they are on underdog. So I'm with you. Running back, wide receiver, hit an elite quarterback. And then all of these names that we're talking about, rounds four, five, six, seven, that's the wide receiver sweet spot. So now that we made the round one pick, let's turn our attention to round two. And again, you have these names and the Amon Ross St. Browns and Garrett Wilson's being drafted around the Najee Harris, who is going 20 spots later on underdog or Aaron Jones, who's going 24 spots later mm -hmm. on underdog. Uh, heck, even Travis Etienne, who I'd probably want to take over the other two is going 17 spots earlier here on Yahoo. This is not a sweet spot when it comes to value. So once we get on the clock, any of these names, if CeeDee Lamb falls to us, if Amon Ross St. Brown or Garrett Wilson, again, these are types that so many people are taking because of their roles, either inside the red zone attached to Aaron Rodgers, or no player has more targets through the first two years of their career than Amon Ross St. Brown. And we're getting either one of these young superstar wide receivers. And I like Garrett Wilson right here, especially now that Corey Davis has up and retired, but totally with you. The worst picks on Yahoo default rankings are these round two, three, four running backs. Jonathan Taylor, 16th overall, bad pick. Yeah. Najee Harris, 22nd. ETN, 24. Aaron Jones, 26. Even J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, James Conner, they're more fourth and fifth round picks. But on underdog, which is a half PPR, they're like seventh and eighth round picks. And I think that's where they should be appropriately drafted. So I'm with you. Hero RB and then move on. I think we make a detour, though, in round three because you've talked about it all summer long, how the elite quarterback is giving you a leg up every single week before you get started. Guys who average 23 plus points. We believe there's four of those and all of those players are being drafted in the third round to the early fourth round on Yahoo. So because of this wide receiver value, after already getting the superstar running back to anchor mm -hmm. our teams, to me, 
going after one of these elite quarterbacks is the play. Yeah, my three favorite. Jalen Hurts is 29th overall. Josh Allen, 33rd overall. And then Lamar Jackson's all the way down at 44th overall. I like leaving with one of them. But even if you miss out on them, I still think like Justin Fields, Joe Burrow, they're in the fifth, sixth round. I think those are still solid plays. And really the big difference is I feel comfortable that you'll be able to beat your friends if you're watching this show at running back and wide receivers. We go really deep into the depths of those, especially now that we have a waiver wire to use. I am not confident that I'll be able to point out a quarterback too that will come close to matching this. And the big difference is all of these quarterbacks at the top now are aliens. They now run and pass. Previously, when it was Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady running fantasy, they were not rushing like these guys are. It's a whole new ball game. Just invest into this position, and then we can win with adding depth at the flex spots. And again, if we're going back and using the cheat code of comparing these all to underdog values, Jalen Hurts is going as 29 in Yahoo versus 24 on underdog. Mahomes, 30 versus 21. Josh Allen, 33 versus 27. And Lamar Jackson is going 11 spots later. Jalen Hurts is the play. He's our quarterback one. They didn't even have to pull the fourth quarter lever last year. He averaged, what, 2.6 completions last year in fourth quarters. Even if you start earlier in your draft with like Christian McCaffrey, if you have the first or second or third pick, getting in round two, Devontae Smith, and then stacking him here with Jalen Hurts, this all aligns. Yeah, he's also so safe. A lot of these players that are on the board have some bust potential, whether it's Roll or just injury like, concerns. Imagine Hurts drafting Hurts. Najee Harris or yeah. Aaron Jones, who have split backfields. Something is going wrong in their situations or is questioned compared to one of these elite mm-hmm. quarterbacks. Like to me, the days of late round quarterbacks, which if you miss on one of these four, trust me, we'll have you covered. Subscribe to the channel. There's a whole video on that. But if you're able to easily while still building a stacked roster, it simply makes sense. Yep, totally agree. And then so after we have a balanced approach, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, which I think is totally fine in your redraft league. Now we've entered the wide receiver sweet spot. And there are so many different flavors of this. To me, the entire Chargers offense in this tier is completely mispriced. Keenan, Mike Williams, and Justin Herbert, if you did miss out on one of these elite quarterbacks, because the offense is going to be changing. They have a healthy offensive line, a good offensive line, a deeper skill group. And Justin Herbert's already made the most of some bad situations. He was third in passing yards last year. If they can just get some more touchdowns. To me, literally the most mispriced player on this is Mike Williams at 74th overall. I think there's a chance that he can be a top 12 option in fantasy. If yeah. you can get him like sixth, seventh round, that's like legitimately stealing. You should be arrested. There's a lot of very easy layups here. Keenan Allen, you talked about Amari Cooper getting him at 37 overall. We'll go through more. And this is, again, the section that we're just going to hammer three, four, maybe even five wide receivers. Mm -hmm. So in this one, where do you want to take? Should we take Amari and then wait on Keenan Allen another round? Because that's going to be easily possible. Yep. I like to go on Amari Cooper. Then if we miss out on Keenan, big Mike Williams time. You could have gone Amari Cooper. You could have gone Drake London. I mean, heck, producer Weaves, I'm just going to list the wide receiver values out there on Yahoo right now. Calvin Ridley is a round two player on underdog, and he's available at the top of the fourth round on Yahoo. You talked about Keenan Allen. DJ Moore is going a round and a half later, round five on Yahoo. Jerry Judy and Christian Watson go 20 to 23 spots later on Yahoo. And you're, like you said, going to exit every single draft with Mike Williams. 74 overall, all the way down in many of the mocks that I've done in the seventh round. So if that's the case, is 30 spots, don't be afraid to take some of those players well, around early. or 18 picks mm-hmm. more earlier than, than where they're listed right now in X-Ray. Yes, and then even after you kind of hit on these like legit wide receiver two with upside, there's a collection of the rookie wide receivers later on yes. in the draft that are all completely mispriced. Jackson Smith and Jigway has a little bit of a wrist injury, so I don't love this one as much, but he still goes 85th overall. Jordan Addison, who on underdog and in, in my rankings in the 60s, he's 93rd on Yahoo. Quinton Johnston, 121st overall. This is this is way into your bench now. Zay Flowers, who goes in the 70s and 80s on underdog. Yep. gets priced at 127th overall. So these are like upside dart throws. Keep them on your bench for a couple weeks, see what happens. But in the stance for like Jordan Addison, there's a chance that he can actually be a flex play right from week one. You're getting this way, way, way too late. Totally agree with you. The running back selections in this area where like Jamal Williams is going 33 spots earlier on Yahoo Brutal. versus underdog. Kenny Gainwell, 48 spots earlier than he is on underdog. I just have to totally avoid that. Perking up at like Jahan Dotson at 82 overall. 
after this Terry McLaurin injury, even before it, we believed in his ability and you can just easily get him mm -hmm. seven, 10, 12 spots before that. And I still feel comfortable with all of it. And again, we'll get to some good mid running backs and heck if like Ramondre or maybe even Brees Hall fall to you in the fourth round, I would, you know, consider not taking a wide receiver in that mm -hmm. spot, but do not be afraid. I will repeat this. Do not be afraid to go and take three or four straight wide receivers because then you don't have to worry about the position at all. What do you think we should be doing for the tight ends? There's kind of two Good names question. I'm looking at. Darren Waller, 78th overall, and everything has been very positive with him. Uh, he goes much earlier than that on underdog. David Njoku, 106th overall. But this is the position that scores the least amount of points. Yep. And I think like as much as we love Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews, some of the players that go around them, we think are like very mispriced. So if I am going to pick a position to kind of be waiting, it's my like running back two, three, I'm willing to wait a little bit. And then the tight end, but still like Darren Waller, David and Joku, this is after a tier where we've already hit on all of our starting wide receivers. What, what do you think? Darren Waller does stand out to me on Yahoo. He's going 17 spots later on this platform. So We've seen the usage that he can have, focal point in the passing game stuff, literally a target hog in that offense. Mm -hmm. The rest, I mean, I, I still wouldn't pay up probably for like TJ Hawkinson in round three or round four. There are some super late, super late tight ends that I absolutely love that maybe in, I don't know, rounds 12, 13, and 14, you can take one or two. And then if those don't work out, check out your waiver wire. I mean, Jawan Johnson at 168 overall, who like has a legitimate chance of being one of the touchdown leaders at the position this season, is someone that probably your league doesn't even have on their queue and could potentially start for you, even yep. if you wait way beyond everyone else. And some might even have two tight ends by the time you do that. Yeah, I think this is a good year. Like, for example, I'll like having David Njoku as my first one after like pick 100 and then tack on a Jawan Johnson, Luke Musgrave's a rookie tight end that probably a lot of your idiot league mates are too drunk <laughs> to even understand who Luke Musgrave is. I like throwing them and just seeing which one of these guys sticks. And if if none of them stick, your wide receivers and quarterbacks are going to be doing so well that it's not even going to really matter. So we've hinted at the second running back spot. Again, every single running back is going to be drafted earlier on Underdog versus Yahoo, but two do stand out in the middle area. DeAndre Swift is going 86 overall. I believe he's going to get the first carry, and like the Eagles, based on reports, do want him to be their starting running back. We'll see how that goes the entire season. Mm -hmm. Zach Charbonnet, 102 overall. Interested in that, too. And then super late, if we can get into this already, Hayden, Jalen Warren is absurdly underrated on Yahoo at 173 overall. If you are drafting on Yahoo, you need to exit every single draft with Jalen Warren. And even if you take him in the 120s or 130. Yeah, I think that's an absolute must. He goes in the 120s on underdog and like completely justified why he's going to be playing passing down for the Steelers. They are committing to Najee Harris on early downs, but we've seen this before. Maybe there's a chance that Jalen Warren could steal some of that work as the season goes on. But even if not, he's just kind of this insurance handcuff type I do think he has the size and the skill set to be an every down guy. So to me, Jalen Warren's a late round pick. I like Luke Musgrave at tight end. And I also like your guy, Zay Jones, a wide receiver. So these are like my three favorite names, the last three picks of your drafts. Let's review. On Yahoo, the best running back values are shockingly in round one. Early on, it can be Chris McCaffrey's, your Austin Ackler's, your B. John Robinson. Even at the end of round one, Nick Chubb, Tony Pollard. Totally cool with all that. Then, after you take that anchor running back, attack the elite wide receivers and one of those elite quarterbacks. Do that for the next four, five rounds, maybe even beyond that. And then try to find one that running back values in the middle areas, whether it be DeAndre Swift, whether it be Zach Charbonnet. You can keep going on and on that list. Just find one that aligns. Definitely leave with the likes of Jalen Warren. And if you still have room, the rookie wide receivers are absurdly undervalued mm -hmm. Zay flowers 41 spots too late quentin johnson 39 spots too late jordan addison all the way down there at pick 93 and if you need a tight end juan johnson is your friend at 168 overall and if you need some help in season this is the channel to be subscribed to we'll have waiver wires we'll do recap shows we have one of my favorite shows of all time stats versus film which we break down the stats versus what they're showing us on tape we'll have weekly recaps weekly previews, rankings, all that fun stuff on the channel. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Yep. And if one of your drafts is on Yahoo, maybe other ones are on ESPN or Sleeper, guess what? The rest of the week is devoted to these cheat code videos for every single platform. So you can crush 
your friends. All right, that's Hayden. I'm Josh. We'll see you next time. Hit that subscribe button. See ya.